We all have mental health, just as we all have physical health. Mental health is much more than the absence of mental illness. Developing positive mental health is foundational to student academic achievement, effective life skills, and overall well-being. If our goal is to ensure that all students have every opportunity to reach their full potential and succeed personally and academically, all educators must have a basic understanding of mental health literacy. Ensuring equity is our job as school leaders and a central goal of Ontario's publicly funded education system as set out in Education for Tomorrow 2020. Our schools need to be places where educators and students value diversity, respect each other, and see themselves reflected in their learning. It is particularly important to provide the best possible learning opportunities and supports for students who may be at risk of not succeeding. Mental health and well-being is a complex topic and may be personally challenging for staff depending on their circumstances. Effective leaders lead by example. When you model self-care and show personal resiliency, others follow your lead, staff and students. It is a powerful way to promote wellness. My name is Deirdre Kinsella Biss, and I'm a project lead for CPCO for this leadership series on school mental health. I am formally a principal from Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, and I'm excited to be co-facilitating this webinar and look forward to learning with and from you today. Welcome to the first of three webinars designed to support principals and vice principals in creating mentally healthy schools in Ontario. These webinars are hosted by ADFO, CPCO and OPC in partnership with School Mental Health Ontario. I think it is unique and timely that we gather to learn more about positive mental health in our schools on Bell Let's Talk Day. Good afternoon. Thank you for your participation in our Minds on activity. My name is Kathy Lott. I am the principal representative for OPC, helping to support the uh, Supporting Student Mental Health Project here. I'm so happy that you joined us today, and I really look forward to your participation over the next hour. Hi, everyone. I'm Judith Desjardins. I am a principal on comment with School Mental Health Ontario, and I'm thrilled to be with them. Prior to being with School Mental Health Ontario, I was with London District Catholic School Board as a system principal for seven years. And prior to that, I spent 13 years as a school administrator in the schools. I'm so excited that all of you have taken time out of your busy, busy schedules and hectic schedules to be with us to learn a little bit more and reflect a little bit more about the importance of student mental health. So welcome to everyone. We're thrilled that you're here. This webinar is designed to be interactive. There will be opportunities for self-reflection and sharing for sharing practices. It is our hope over the next hour we spend together to build a community of lead learners who are open to sharing and building knowledge, skills, and practices. The tools and resources featured in this webinar are relevant to all schools, including bricks and mortar, as well as virtual context. So why do we do feelings check-ins? What we're going to ask you to do now is to use a GIF, an emoji, a meme, or just a word to share with our group on how you're feeling. If you would please enter into the Mentimeter and uh, we'll take a look at the GIFs that come up. Okay, Thanks, Kathy, Deidre. Can... I just wanted to share with you when we had the Mentimeter talking about um, Prior to this about words, a lot of the words that came up were around balance and family and compassion. So that was great to see. Thank you. We're seeing that come up on the screen now. And now we're seeing those emojis or those words about huh, someone's freezing. So that's uh, perhaps where they're at. Um, <laughs> we see that people are happy, maybe a little bit of contemplative, um, going, ah, I'm not sure what to think. Uh, how I'm feeling right now and that's okay as well and we see some people that are doing quite well so thank you for all of you for taking time we are going to use Mentimeter throughout the session so please if you've got that second device we also have um, people putting some information into the chat and that works for me as well just please ensure that you're using the all panelists and attendees um, tab or option so that we can all see those comments all right. So again, as principals, why do we do feelings check-ins or why would teachers do feelings check-ins? Well, a key SEL competency is self-awareness, and it starts with students being able to identify how they feel. So a daily feelings check-in helps all of us learn to recognize different emotions and also to recognize the intensity of our emotions. 
We can't ma manage a feeling if we can't recognize it. So doing these check-ins, it normalizes feelings. When we do check-ins with students, we help teach students to recognize that all feelings are okay. It then opens up the conversation that how we handle those feelings makes all the difference. Identification and management of emotions is a component in social emotional learning as we help students to gauge their emotions. So encouraging your staff to implement regular check-ins with students communicates that how everyone feels is important. It's a simple daily task to do that sh shows students that we care, you matter, we want to listen, and we are here to support individual needs. So at this moment, I'd like to do a land acknowledgement. I acknowledge that our participants today are on the traditional territory of nations within nations, including Anishinaabe, the Ojibwe, and the Michi Sajigig. I acknowledge that I myself am on the traditional territory of the Chippewas of the Rama First Nation. This land has been and continues to be home to many diverse First Nation, Inuit, and Métis peoples. I would like to acknowledge the enduring presence of Indigenous peoples on the lands on which I gather with you today across Ontario, and I thank the past, present, and future caretakers of the land. I am grateful to have the opportunity to work and learn on these lands in a community of sharing. As users of the land, be it for pleasure or utility, we must continue to work to keep it clean and use it with care so that generations to come can also continue to benefit from the land. I now ask you to please join us in our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Good and, lo good and loving God, we thank you for creating the world in all its beauty. We thank you for memory which enables us to build on the experiences of, of the past. For imagination which admits us to a wider world than we could have otherwise known. And for foresight by which we plan for the future. Bless this unseen work that we do on behalf of our students who, through their Catholic education, will strive to make a difference in the world. We ask this in your name, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So for our learning goals today, we will gain a deeper understanding of mentally healthy schools. We will explore the AIM model and learn how to think in tiers to effectively design and monitor mental health services for your school. And together, we will explore resources to support school improvement planning. A leader's role at school relates to instruction and learning. However, we know that without healthy minds, learning and teaching is a difficult task. Throughout our webinar, please take note of these two emojis. They act as the key to our built-in active learning moments. So when you see the emoji on the left side, we encourage you to share an idea or a thought to our discussion, sometimes through the chat box and sometimes through the use of Mentimeter. We will share the directions at the time. And when you see the emoji on the right side of the screen here, we encourage you to take a brief moment to privately write down or journal notes, key ideas, questions for reflection at a later time. As leaders, a tool that helps us refine our leadership skills is the Ontario Leadership Framework. Next up, we will take a look at the leadership tools and their connection to the work we do to lead mentally healthy schools. Mental health and well-being is our priority. Setting direction and building a shared vision is an important aspect of your leadership role. Principals and vice principals must work collaboratively with students, staff, parents, and other stakeholders to develop an overall sense of purpose and understanding for the work being done in this area. Developing trusting relationships with all stakeholders and leading with compassion and empathy is an essential part of creating positive, healthy, safe learning environments for our students to thrive. The Ontario Leadership Framework highlights the personal leadership resources. These leadership resources are the interpersonal skills that help us work effectively with people. Within the category of social resources, the importance of leaders being able to perceive emotions, manage emotions, and act in emotionally appropriate ways is recognized. The personal leadership resources, often referred to as PLRs, are a skill set each leader brings to the table to build and enhance relationships that create a sense of belonging and well-being for our students. Important PLRs are also identified in the psychological resources category of the framework. Optimism, self-efficacy, resilience, and proactivity are highlighted as key leadership resources. These skills help us recognize where we have direct influence. Modeling is a key leadership practice. 
Prioritizing self-care and believing in ourselves and our abilities will help us meet our goals for creating positive, mentally healthy schools. Schools are an excellent place to promote and protect mental health. Ensuring equity is essential to improving student achievement and promoting student and staff well-being. Being equity-minded as a school leader is critical. Let's now take a look at some tips on how to be equity-minded. As school leaders, here are a few key ideas that will help you create equitable practices and opportunities within your schools. Understand the intersection between equity and mental health. For example, people often experience both mental health issues, addictions, and additional inequities such as transphobia, racialization, or poverty simultaneously. Intersectionality creates unique experiences of inequity and mental health that create added challenges for the individual, the community, and the health system. Educate yourself about systemic oppression, racism, privilege. Look for ways to dismantle powerful, unexamined ideas that perpetuate discriminatory practices. Ground your work in culturally relevant and responsive practices. For example, how can I incorporate Indigenous ways of knowing into my current pedagogical practice? Pedagogical practice. We can support our mental health and well-being by looking at our cultural teachings and taking care of ourselves holistically as depicted in the four areas of the Indigenous medicine wheel. The medicine wheel is an important symbol for many Indigenous peoples that carries teachings about the stages of life, seasons of the year, elements of nature, animals, ceremonial plants, and the aspects of being like the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. There are many opportunities to learn from the Indigenous peoples. Check your own privileges. For example, how comfortable am I talking about racism and what are my own anti-racism strategies? Consult with humility and take a learning stance when considering programming that is designed to support a, mar a marginalized population. For example, our LGBTQ2S+, Black or Indigenous students. When you introduce a new mental health initiative, consider the degree to which all students are served and who may need something more or different. Consider your most vulnerable students here. So now we invite you to pause and think and take a few minutes to enter your ideas into the chat box to answer this question. What do you currently have in place in your school to ensure that all students, families and staff feel like they matter, that they are included and that they belong? Take a moment and please join us and share your thoughts in the chat box. Looking at the chat box, um, people are writing their ideas down and processing right now. And, and so again, looking for what do we currently have in place so that people know that they matter, that they're included and that they belong. So we do have uh, some comments coming in now regarding modeling mental health check-ins at all meetings and gatherings. I know that there are a lot of teachers that welcome their students every day, have a one-to-one -one connection with them. We celebrate moments of excellence. We have equity as a parent committee. Taking mindfulness minutes are some other ideas coming in. And one more would be we re recognize all the children at least once over the course of the school year. Thank you, Judith. As school leaders, the promise of mental health can be realized through a firm commitment to equity and inclusion. By addressing stigmas and the barriers that exist in our schools, be it structural knowledge, quality, equity, or systemic in nature, we can support our students on their mental health journey. Cultural safety is individual and is guided by learners in a way that feels safe to them. By honoring cultural teaching, it creates a welcoming environment for Indigenous students in the classroom and all other learners. By honoring Indigenous perspectives within the classrooms, all learners benefit. These guiding principles apply to Indigenous students, but the same ideas should be extended to other cultural perspectives, such that all students feel welcome and valued. We know that Black, Indigenous, and other marginalized communities are impacted by systemic racism and colonial structures in education, healthcare, and other areas of society. We can support mental health and the well-being of our students by looking at cultural teachings and taking care of ourselves and each other holistically. 
please keep these facts in mind when welcoming various communities. As school leaders, we've been given a unique opportunity to impact, educate, and care for the students in our schools. We know that students cannot achieve academically if they don't feel safe or welcomed at school, if their mental health is at risk, and if they don't have the tools or motivation to adopt a healthy, active lifestyle, both inside and outside of school. So you'll note on the graphic here from Ontario's Wellbeing Strategy that student well-being is at the centre of the umbrella. That includes safe schools, equity, diversity and inclusion, healthy school environments and positive mental health. Promoting positive mental health is a key component of student well-being. Fostering learning environments that consider the components of well-being combine to create opportunities for positive mental health. It is our responsibility as principals to create the conditions in our schools that build communities of practice, which encourage students to develop healthy minds and healthy relationships. School leaders help to create the conditions needed for respectful, safe, inclusive, and accepting learning environments. Relationship building and knowing our staff and students are key aspects. It is our responsibility to identify and work collaboratively to eliminate discriminatory practices, systemic barriers and bias from our schools and classrooms to support the potential for all students to succeed. Research indicates that there's a clear relationship between positive student mental health and school achievement. So when students are preoccupied with emotional concerns, they cannot be fully available for learning. So let's take a close look at some of the research on student mental health in this brief video clip from the Ontario College of Teachers. The video is eight minutes of length. We will watch just the first minute. One in five students experiences a mental health concern in any given year. That's one in five of us. 70% of mental health problems begin in childhood or adolescence. That's not easy to go through alone. 1.2 million children and youth are affected by mental illness, but Less than 20% are treated. Only one in five are treated. Nearly one quarter of the First Nation youth reported psychological distress. How do we help? Suicide is the second leading cause of death for teens. Suicide. So the full video is listed on a resource page at the end of this webinar if you choose to use it with your staff at a future date. Uh, the video goes on to emphasize that a teacher's job is not to diagnose, but we do need to learn how to notice and build our confidence in knowing how best to approach a student that may be struggling. Um, the OCT video also underscores that it is a teacher's professional responsibility to report. So it's a great one to share with your staff. Again, it's on the resource page at the end of the webinar. School Mental Health Ontario resources provide opportunities for us to learn how we as school leaders can make a difference towards promoting positive mental health for our students. Through research and consultation with Ontario school and system leaders, 10 organizational conditions are identified for us as leaders to consider and reflect upon. As leaders, we set the conditions for educators to promote mental health and SEL. And we also set the conditions so that educators notice when a student may be struggling and connect students with supports. So this slide shows us the first five of 10 top organization conditions for educators. Let's take a closer look at number one and number four in the slide here. We want you to think about your leadership actions specific to your visible commitment and shared language use across your school. So we're gonna ask for your input here. What are the visible indicators for your staff, your students, your parents or caregivers that show that you are strongly committed to supporting student mental health at school? And we ask that you add your ideas to the Mentimeter. And as you're adding your ideas, if you can precede your comment with the word staff, students, parent or caregiver so that we know which group the indicator is intended for. Thanks, Kathy. And we're starting to see some people get onto the Mentimeter. I'll also watch the chat as well. Making ourselves visible from the school leader perspective is something we can do as well in a virtual learning environment. So I encourage you to think about that. I know there's been some news that maybe that will end for some of us, but lots of our students are still working in that way and we want to be visible to them. 
So we're seeing some things about um, being mentioned regarding partnerships with community agencies and parents share our school improvement plan and including the focus on mental health. So discussing that with parents is really important. From a school level, planning activities for the staff and the students around, around mental health. For staff, having collaborative dialogues. So that actually it was for staff, students and parents, lots of collaborative dialogues. We see that we have Healthy Hearts Team, which is a student leadership initiative at a school. Wellness nights are very popular sometimes and inviting in your supports from the board or your community partners. The leadership team of, oh, that one left me, um, children and staff addressing some positives, uh, positive mental health. So the leadership team is talking about how do we address positive mental health school-wide. So that's an ongoing conversation to have. So thank you for that. Lots of ideas are starting to populate on the Menti Meter, but I'll hand it back to you, Deidre and Kathy. Thanks, Judith. So lots of visible indicators there. We uh, also invite you to pause and think, how do you build as a leader, how do you build shared language for mental health and well-being in your school? Just to pause and think about that. And as Judith was sharing and as folks were um, putting in their ideas, we did see lots of ideas around professional development. Um, so it's not a surprise that another one of the top 10 organizational conditions on the next slide shows this number seven is the professional opportunities. So again, we're inviting you to pause and think about what are the professional learning opportunities you provide to ensure all staff are ready, willing, and confident to support student mental health. So Kathy, some information is coming in through the chat, which is a great way to share with us. So lots of opportunities to involve support staff and, and admin talking about how to engage um, students. So it's that ongoing conversation. Uh, some individuals, may have had staff participate in the mental health literacy course that became available through school mental health recently. So lots of opportunities for professional learning and certainly the um, mental health leader at the school, at the board can help support you with some of those other opportunities. And we just released the action kit. So the student um, action kit to support mental health is available to everyone as well. Thanks, Kathy. This brief video is one that you could share with your staff to deepen their mental health literacy. As we view this video, please consider, so what, now what? Use the chat box to share a few comments that reflect how you might use this video with your staff. So I ask you now to take a moment and join us and watch the video. Mental health is an important part of our overall well-being and is something we all can play a role in addressing. It's a subject that deserves our attention. According to Statistics Canada, one in three Canadians will experience one of six mental illnesses or substance use disorders in their lifetime. Other research for the Mental Health Commission of Canada shows that in any given year, one in five Canadians will experience a mental illness or addiction. Awareness has been raised about the importance of helping those experiencing mental illness to get access to treatments that will improve their mental health. But what about the four in five, or 80% of the population, who will not experience a mental illness or an addiction? What about their mental health? Are they mentally healthy? First, what is mental health? There is some confusion about what mental health means and this can have an impact on how we address mental health. For example, a lot of people think that when we talk about mental health, we're talking about mental illness, that these subjects are one and the same. Really, mental health and mental illness are two different things. Mental illnesses are conditions where our thinking, mood, and behaviors severely and negatively impact how we function in our lives. Mental illnesses can include depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, and other mood disorders. Mental health, on the other hand, like the term health, is a positive concept. It relates to our ability to enjoy life and to manage it in ways that help us reach our goals. 
and cope with stresses. It's a sense of spiritual and emotional well-being. This means mental health is more than the absence of mental illness. Now, if mental health and mental illness are two different ideas, what's the relationship to one another? Sometimes people picture mental health and mental illness being two ends of a continuum, as if one is the opposite of the other. But a lot of research shows that we should think about mental health and mental illness as separate yet interconnected concepts that need to be looked at, measured and responded to differently. We should think of them on two separate continua. So here's what the mental health and mental illness continua really look like. On the mental illness continuum, one end runs from severe mental illness to no mental illness. On the mental health continuum, one end runs from poor mental health to good mental health. This model shows that a person without mental illness is not necessarily mentally healthy. They may be feeling down or experiencing a high level of stress because of life circumstances. But it also shows us that we can all strive for good mental health, that even individuals with mental illness can have good mental health. Let me give you an example. This is Tara. Tara has been diagnosed with depression, a potentially severe mental illness. However, her depression is now under control. She's on medication and sees her psychotherapist regularly. She likes her job, feels capable of completing her work and is able to eat right, sleep well and exercise. She feels comfortable and respected in the places where she lives and works, and she feels like people in her life love her and understand her. Despite her mental illness, Tara has good mental health. So how do we promote mental health? How do we make more people mentally healthy? While there are things we can do to take care of our own mental health, the community where we live, work, and play has a big impact on our mental health. A community can promote mental health when its members have access to good jobs, incomes, and housing. A mentally healthy community makes people feel safe and secure and like they belong because it's inclusive of people with different ages, backgrounds, genders, languages, and sexualities. There are simple things that you can do to help create a community that is mentally healthy. Know and accept that everyone faces daily challenges. Get involved in your community and give back. Support and include different types of people in your community. Finally, there are many things that you can do to take care of your own mental health, whether you have a mental illness or not. No one accept that life can be challenging. Create purpose in your life by learning and trying new activities, like starting a hobby and setting realistic goals. Create healthy, trusting relationships with people who accept and support you. No one accept your strengths and weaknesses Accept yourself and others. It's the basis of self-esteem. And learn to recognize and understand that you and others have good and bad feelings. By increasing good mental health, all of these things contribute to the overall health of Canadians. Like the World Health Organization famously said, there is no health without mental health. On the right side of the slide is the dual continuum model from School Mental Health Ontario. Well, you might imagine mental health on one side of, the, of a continuum and mental illness on another, it's probably more complex than that. This dual continuum model allows a more comprehensive way of looking at mental health and mental illness. Mental illness and mental well-being or positive mental health are two different concepts, not opposite. They are separate yet interconnected. You can have a mental illness and still have good mental health, just like you can have diabetes and still feel healthy. The key is to know how to manage your symptoms and to live fully in spite of the challenges you face. To understand how we can help our students to have positive mental health, let's take a look at the AIM model, a tiered system of support and some resources that can help us design and monitor positive mental health work in our schools. Take a moment right now to read the definition of mental health that's on the slide.
In addition to this particular definition, the World Health Organization stresses the positive dimension of mental health through their definition, which states health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Shown on the right side of the slide is a resource that can help you with programming and school-wide planning to further support student mental health. As principals, you likely have used the ministry document Supporting Minds. School Mental Health Ontario has a support document entitled Supporting Minds Strategies at a Glance. You will see this link on our resource page at the end of the webinar here today. Supporting Minds Strategy at a Glance can be used as a resource during your in-school team meeting. Some students will require additional support because of stressful circumstances, vulnerabilities, or trauma experiences. When your school staff recognize that a staff is struggling, have a specific informational for support of mental health problems. Some students may need educational supports guided by an IEP, and this document can assist a school team in selecting and documenting strategies for success. The Aligned and Integrated Model, the AIM model, outlines a multi-tiered system of support for Ontario schools and emphasizes that most of the work of schools is or should be focused on Tier 1, mental health promotion, and Tier 2, prevention services. This model is designed to help you with your school improvement planning. When you think in tiers, you can effectively design and monitor mental health services for your school. So let's look at Tier 1, shown here in green. It's the foundational component for school and classroom leadership and is good for all students. This is the foundational everyday work you and your staff do to welcome and include students, to understand them and build knowledge of mental health, to promote mentally healthy habits and to partner with parents, students and other staff to create a supportive environment. Most of the mental health work that we do in schools is found here at this level. Tier two, the blue section, is necessary for some students. Tier two focuses on prevention and early intervention. In every class in school, there will be some students who may need additional support in the classroom. You can help by reinforcing skills and working to remove barriers to learning. At this level, school mental health professionals and others with specialized skills provide intervention services like structured psychotherapy. And tier three, the purple section at the top of the triangle is essential for few students. Tier three supports students requiring more intensive assessment and intervention services. Although it will always be necessary for schools to provide some level of tier three service because students cannot or will not access outside supports and to manage crisis events as they arrive, our role in schools is to help to access appropriate community or health services and to provide needed ongoing care while students are at school. Schools are uniquely positioned for mental health promotion, early identification, prevention, and early intervention services. While we have a supportive role to play in crisis management and can provide accommodations and classroom strategies for students struggling with mental illness, we do not have responsibility for intensive mental health services. We need to work in partnership with community and health partners as part of the system of care. Our priority contribution is upstream promotion and prevention. Many of these practical ideas that are classroom ready can be shared with you and your staff through a two page resource called Overview of Mental Health and Wellbeing at School. Now, let's take a look at SMHO's resource, which helps school teams with overall school improvement planning to ensure social emotional learning is intentional and purposeful. Okay, so Leading Mentally Healthy Schools Reflection Tool is a support tool for you as principals. This reflection tool will help your school team reflect on core elements of mentally healthy schools to support overall school improvement planning and ensure social emotional learning is intentional and purposeful. In each section of this tool, some examples are listed that highlight features of a mentally healthy school. So this list is not exhaustive, but it provides a sampling of look for's that may be helpful for your reflection about your own school. This slide highlights a few plan pieces that would be considered under the welcome aspect of tier one. So if you take a look at the last point in the chart here, it asks about diversity being honored, respected and valued. 
So for example, one of the ways to honor Indigenous knowledge and to create a welcoming environment for Indigenous students is to learn more about different cultural teachings from Indigenous peoples. Read through these student engagement look for us for the include component of Tier 1 Thinking and Planning, where we look at student engagement and belonging. Student voice is a large part of student engagement. Giving students voice and involving students in school decision making encourages participation in classroom and community life. Involving students in decisions that affect them either through formal structures and processes or informal processes as individuals is key. Intentionally creating these opportunities for students is important. We know there are many creative and innovative ways that school leaders encourage student voice in schools. So what does student voice look like in your school? Please take a moment to identify some of the things you do to encourage student voice. And again, we'd just like you to add some ideas to, into our chat box. Thanks, Kathy. We are, some people have assemblies. They let students lead them and um, share the announcements. Some are holding some focus groups with students of all ages. I know when I was a principal in the school, it was about talking with, are we meeting your needs? What do you like about school? What don't you like? What could we do differently? Uh, we have others that have student council that students, as many students as possible, join that and help with those activities. Um, journal writing, really important. And the Echo Club is certainly has student voice within that. So through all of that, the more students feel that they're heard and part of their culture, the climate of the school, the more they feel like they belong to that school and that alone will improve their, their mental health. So a kindness committee is also being noted here. So thank you very much, student representative, sitting with the staff, sitting with the parents on the Safe School Committee is also being noted. Um, thanks everyone, those are great ideas. Okay, and just a key to remember as well, Judith, it's not just about student voice as we know, it's about how we listen and then how we choose to act on student voice and the, the opportunities that we provide for kids or we allow them leadership in the school. So thanks for that. Um, so taking a look at the next part of this tool, we're looking at the look for us now for the understand component of tier one, where we look at mental health literacy and the understanding our students. So if we look at the third look for here on the chart, it's highlighted in green. Mistakes are viewed by all students and educators as opportunities for learning, which is a growth mindset approach. So this look for can be further explored in the supporting mind strategies at a glance. Let's take a look at the snapshot on the next slide. So supporting mind strategy at a glance is the resource pictured here on the left. It offers ideas that help educators in the classroom to, to support students by sharing a variety of accommodations and modifications that can help learners to be successful. This resource also offers way to bolster students by helping them build skills and strategies that support mental health. For instance, when we are supporting a student struggling with perfectionism, we can go to the page to go to page seven and look under the heading strategies for supporting students with anxiety problems in the classroom for some support and bolster ideas. Perfectionism is discussed here and described as fear or worry about making mistakes or getting things wrong, a reluctance to hand things in unless they're perfect. In this example, supporting mind strategies at a glance provides guidance on making mistakes. See the slide here for some ideas and suggestions. As a school leader, how do you encourage the use of mistakes to become opportunities for learning? We ask you now to take a moment and think and share your ideas in the chat box with us. I'm gonna pick up on one of the comments made earlier regarding that open door policy. And, and that's so important for a school leader to have so that students feel that the school office or the, the principal's office, the vice principal's office mm -hmm. is a safe place mm -hmm. to be. And when we do make mistakes as students, we know often that we can go to the school leaders and they'll help us support us. How do we, how do we make amends? How do we move forward from that? So thank you. Thank you for everyone. I know that lots of people are just jotting things down as well privately, and that's absolutely fine as well. Just thinking about this information is going to help us to go back into our schools tomorrow, be it virtually or face-to-face, 
and think about how we're supporting our students differently. Thanks. Thanks, Judith. Valuing the learning skills and work habits found on the report card provides entry points for your social emotional learning for many students. Using the report card learning skills and work habits section as a point of reflection and focus for goal setting helps students to develop positive attitudes and habits. Once again, can we ask you to take a moment to reflect on these ideas and then take a look at the reflection questions that are listed on the left hand side of the slide. We'd like you to share your thoughts of, about these two questions in the chat box. So thinking about that idea, what is the evidence in your school that staff value and teach learning skills and work habits? I know in my schools, when the staffs have the, the posters up about good work habits, or they have posters up about developing executive functioning skills so that that supports their work habits as well, having those conversations with kids so kids start to understand themselves better and then can set goals for themselves on how to better develop their skills and become the best person that they're meant to be. And someone's agreeing, I think a little bit with what I'm talking about, and that's developing their metacognitive approach um, and modeling, talking about your thinking. So when we as staff model how, what we're thinking as we work through something, we're teaching learning skills as well. We're trying to catch kids in action um, and name appropriate demonstrations. Uh, another principal or, or vice principal has Mindset Mondays as a focus. Posting creating success criteria when it comes to learning skills. And then once it's posted, to keep going back to that and referencing it so students start to understand what those learning skills mean. And my blueprint is a wonderful a uh, place mm -hmm. for kids to be self-reflective and to see their growth throughout the academic year and actually throughout several years. So thank you for all of those ideas. Thanks, Judith. A whole school approach to mental health includes many things. Mental health is everyone's responsibility. All stakeholders in the school must be involved. That includes students, teachers, families, and the community at large. In particular, we really need to work to build partnerships with families in order to move this agenda forward. Our traditional approach to parent involvement has to change. We need to be connecting with families regularly, not just when there's a problem. The OLF highlights the fostering of genuine trusting relationships as a key leadership practice. Respectful ongoing communication and transparency are essential to encouraging parent engagement. Helping staff understand that parents are partners in students' education and both academic achievements and social emotional development is part of our role as leader. Parents need to be invited into a reciprocal partnership with the school where we share responsibility for student success. When we involve parents, they are more supportive because they understand what is happening in the classroom and our school. By understanding each other's perspectives and experiences makes us more effective. I invite you now to take a moment and think and share your thoughts once again in the, in the chat box. How do you understand and engage your family's unique lived experiences and partner with your community to promote and support positive mental health and learning in your school? Take a moment and think about that question and share your thoughts with us. Thanks, Deidre. Someone <laughs> had put into the, com into the chat box about that we as school administrators, we don't have to have all the answers. We don't have to know what the next step is with students. So partnering with our parents who might who know their children better than we do, maybe they've come across similar situations that we have as well, and they can help us come up with solutions or things or strategies to try with the student. We're also seeing people talk about a one page uh, principal message that comes out weekly. And even through remote learning, it's called Friday Spirit Day. So thanks for that, where families share a photo and then use the photo to create an iMovie to share with our school community. I love that idea. Thank you. Uh, some are practice, some are just being available. I love that suggestion too. Just being present to your school community, that you're here to listen, you're here to have a conversation. And right now during this time of high stress for our families as well. They just need sometimes someone just to give them a listening ear. 
Brené Brown, of course, is a good resource to go back to her, her video on empathetic listening. Um, engaging our parents in online learning forums, for example, the Children's Mental Health, um, does social stories with the school. And so I'm assuming that we're talking about using social stories in the school and or the class to uh, support and, and engage our families as well. Thank you again for all of your thoughts. Thanks, Judith. Leading Mentally Healthy Schools Reflections Tool is a tool for continuous learning and improvement in mental health and well-being at school. The document is scrolling on the screen here for you to take a look at. The questions are provided to you on a fillable form. And at the end of the Leading Mentally Healthy Reflection Tool is a fillable chart that helps you and your school improvement team think and plan for the next steps. So David Wenger said, the smartest person in the room is the room. Let's use the room, our webinar room, to, get, to gather ideas of specific, intentional, and purposeful actions that you've taken or you're considering taking, um, given your learning here today, to help lead a mentally healthy school. We have created a proud moment board set up on Mentimeter in the chat box for you to share your ideas. But if you feel more comfortable just typing in your ideas, please do so. The Mentimeter code is on the top of the slide. So here are a couple of the examples that you might see for each tier. So good for all tier one, an example or suggestion that might show up in that area would be, we use our school mascot in our language for everything we do to help build a sense of community and a sense of belonging. In tier two, necessary for some, you may see an example or suggestion that looks like this. Our division lead teacher and our CYW work together to lead a small support group for students with similar needs as prevention and early intervention. And essential for few, tier three, you may see an example that says our school attendance counselor sees students on an individual basis and runs a couple of small groups to provide additional space and time to help teach and reinforce healthy coping habits. Thank you to all, um, please take a moment right now and uh, take some time to fill in some of your ideas so that we can share our good practices. Thanks, teacher. What I love about this activity is it causes us time to pause. We as school administrators, we're running really, really fast. We're trying to meet everyone's needs, including our, our students, our parents, our community, our teachers. But taking a moment to look at all those really good things that we are doing to support student mental health in the classroom is really, really important. And if you were to take the celebration wall, this proud moment wall, and incorporate it into your regular practice, how powerful would that be for you to model for your staff, which maybe they'll then model in the classroom, these proud moments that our kids need to be celebrating as well. So we do see some information coming in in regards to inviting your mental health lead to meet with the school support team each term. The use of uni universal design for learning so that we're meeting everyone's needs and better unpacking what does universal design for learning really mean? Share the good and the bright spots throughout the day on a wall as well. So celebration is such an important thing for us as school leaders to take time to reflect on all the really good things happening in our building and making it public so that Everyone knows, yeah, we're in this together. We're doing some really neat things through some really challenging times. Thank you. Quality monitoring is part of leadership and it holds us all accountable to the goals we set. It is a vehicle that generates collaborative discussions about next steps. Monitoring is a way of checking in on the successes that are happening in your school. So as an initial step, school teams need to decide what evidence that you will collect to effectively monitor your plans and goals. So let's think about the triangulation of data. In monitoring your school-wide mental health literacy initiatives, so what evidence, so think conversations, the observations and the product, what evidence are you looking to collect? Again, just we ask you to pause and reflect and add some ideas to the chat box. What is the evidence that you are looking to collect? So again, today, this workshop or this webinar is really about a lot of self-reflection time. Uh, some people are going to collect attendance data. Some people might take a look at suspension data. Some people might look at uh, minutes that children are engaging online. How many times children turn on their, their cameras or not. Uh, referrals to the office might be something else that people are collecting 
certainly um, some of those conversations and recording those conversations that you've had with, with parents and with students. Uh, the school climate survey is a really good opportunity to gather more information. So again, thank you. Thank you for taking that time of pause. And that's hopefully what this hour is providing you with to think about all the good things that you're doing. Okay, and we hope that you find that this Leading Mentally Healthy Schools Reflection Tool is valuable as a source of data for your monitoring. The data, data gathered from this tool is a great place to begin with your staff because it does provide data on the here's what. So you could choose to share it with all the educators in your building as you seek input on your school's current stage of implementation within each of the items listed, and it just takes a couple of minutes. Mentimeter has been a tool that we've used throughout this webinar, and it's a great way to capture voice and ideas. So we encourage you to try and think about how you might be able to use Mentimeter with your own staff and, um, and capture what people are thinking out there. It's a different vehicle to use uh, and an effective one. So we want to take a moment to thank everybody for participating today. We hope that you leave here with a deeper understanding of the roles schools play in supporting mental health of the, how to create conditions for mental health and well-being, of the mental health dual continuum, the AIM model, and the resources available you, to you to support school improvement planning. Our next webinar, webinar two, will be held Thursday, February 18th, 2021 at 4 p.m. And webinar three will be held March 22nd, 2021 at 4 p.m. We very much encourage you to visit the SMHO website and to take time to familiarize yourself with the multitude of resources Schools Mental Health Ontario has created to support Ontario school leaders in this work. Thank you for learning on behalf of yourself, on behalf of each other, and on behalf of the students in your school. Together, we are better. Thanks, Kathy and Deidre, for leading us through this. Um, from school mental health perspective, it is a privilege of ours to partner with the associations to bring this information to you. I have put into the chat to highlight the mental health literacy course for school leaders. It became available in January, so it's now available through D2L. And if you follow this link, it'll take you right to it. It is a self-paced six-hour certificate um, course with six modules. So do it when you can it might just give you some more ideas to support your staff as well again thank you everyone it's been wonderful to be with you we hope to see you again